do have about five after, and I know we have others coming on, but we do have a wonderful, wonderful lesson on today, so I didn't want to prolong the time. So ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you for coming on our Tuesday night Bible study. We appreciate you taking the time out to come and fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. And we also thank you, Pastor, for allowing us this time. So if we can please bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord, Lord, you know the times that we're living in today, Lord. First of all, Lord, we want to thank you for everything you've done, Lord. We appreciate just you allowing us to wake up this morning and have the activities of our lives and just have a mind to want to be on Bible study today, Lord. We also want to come to you humbly, Lord. We ask that you just touch the people right now that's in Uvalde, Texas, Lord. Um, it breaks our heart. There was someone's child, someone's grandchild, someone's cousin, someone's best friend, all children, Lord, plus the teacher, Lord. We ask that you touch mm -hmm. all of their families and give them strength along with the community as well. We ask, Lord, that you keep the ark of protection over our children, Lord. It's not a one-sided thing. Things are happening like this all over. But we do want to thank you for keeping your protection over our children, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you just bless the ones' hearts that are in bereavement today. Um, the names um, the names are in my heart, Lord. I can't remember them right now. But um, Pastor said a lot of names this morning in, in this morning's prayer, Lord. We ask that you touch those people in bereavement, Lord. And we also want to thank you for a new life, Lord. So we ask that you um, just continue to watch over Tansy and her new little one. And also just bless all the mothers, Lord. There's something about our mothers in our church, our Faith Temple Church, Lord. We love them so much. We appreciate them. And we thank you for allowing them to have all of this time with them. They are wise, Lord, and they're teaching us as young women, middle-aged women, even senior women, on the way to go when it comes to you, Lord. Lord, thank you for this avenue. Again, we ask again, Lord, that you just bless everyone in the sound of my voice. May you touch their families. And thank you for health, for strength. Thank you for the love you've shown us when you let your son Jesus die for our sins, Lord. We just thank you for that. And we thank your son Jesus for being our intercessor, Lord, because we can't go to you because we're, some of us are not right. Lord, and we know that in order to get to you, we need to go through Jesus. So we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God. And we thank everyone again for coming on to this venue and our Bible study. Our teacher, Lord, we ask that you put a special blessing over him, Lord, as he endeavors to teach this lesson in his own way, and that we may get a great understanding of the way he's going to present it. And Lord, we ask all of these things in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, ladies and gentlemen. So um, we are on lesson 12. <clears throat> our scheduled, a scheduled conversation. So we do have our background readings as being Psalms 57, 2 and 3. We have Acts 10, 29 to 31. And we have Hebrews 5, 5 through 10 with our devotional reading being Psalms 73, 25 to the 28th verse. And our central verse is Psalms 55, 16 and 17. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to present to you our teacher for this evening, Elder Terrell Bassett, 
And may we all please say amen as he comes. Amen, amen Elder Batson. I bless you. Amen. amen. I bless you. Amen. You guys hear me? Yes. Mm-hmm. All right. Good evening, everybody. Hope you guys have had a blessed day so far. Amen. Amen. It's good. Glad to see you all here. Um, our lesson for tonight is a scheduled conversation. Amen. A scheduled conversation. And um, Sister Kid, she, she gave us our scriptures, our background reading, our devotional, amen. So we're going to be in the Old Testament and the book of Psalms. And then we'll be in the New Testament in Acts and Hebrew. Amen. Um, but we're talking about a conversation on tonight, a scheduled conversation. Um, I just want to break down, you know, some things about uh, conversing, amen, and, and who we are conversing with. So we're going to figure out the purpose of conversation. Um, we're going to see the benefits of conversation um, and how uh, there is a scheduled time for everything. Amen. And then we're finally going to see the greatest example uh, uh, of a conversation. Amen. So um, let's just start with our introduction. I mean, if we can start with our introduction, it's just one paragraph and then we'll jump right into the lesson. Amen. Our introduction, we are busy people. We rise in the mornings and a host of daily matters demands our attention. Listed among these items are showering, eating, breakfast, exercising, getting ourselves ready to work, getting kids off to school, and check in voice and text messages. We return home for work in the afternoons or evenings. We prepare dinner, pay bills, help the kids with homework, go through the mail, and do some work around the house. Before you know it, it is time to go to bed and start this routine all over again. Amen. Amen. So. <laughs> Uh, it's a schedule. I mean, how many how many of us live our lives on a particular schedule? I mean, I know I do. I mean, Monday through Friday, I get up at a particular time, have to be at work at a particular time, have to take lunch at a particular time. You get off at a particular time. Amen. So we're on this uh, the schedule. Amen. Because life demands our attention. All right. Life demands it demands your attention, um, but. What we have to understand and what we're going to talk about in the lesson tonight is that uh, so does the giver of life. He also demands our attention. Amen. He's the very reason we have life to begin with. All right. So should he be on the back burner? Amen. Should he play second fiddle? Should he be secondary? Amen. When everything that we have is because of who? Jesus. Jesus. It's because of him. The job that you get up and go to every day. Guess what? He allowed you to have that. Amen. Yeah, you put the resume in. Amen. Yeah, you made the phone calls, but God allowed it to happen. Amen. He allowed these things to happen. Um, And... We know that we have responsibilities. We have jobs. We have cars. We have houses. We have kids. Amen. Uh, but he allowed all these things. So you may be living saved as a Christian. Amen. But that does not mean that you don't have to take time to speak to God. Amen. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm saved. I'm, I'm living the life. I'm living it. But why, so why do I have to speak? Amen. When I'm living it out. Right. Simple analogy. Marriage. All right. Marriage is the simplest analogy that we can come up with. All right. Uh, I'm married. You know, we're married. We got the ring. We got the license. We're living together. All right. But if there's no conversation, there's no growth. Am I right? Married people. All right. There has to be a, a conversation. 
and that's what it is to God. It's the same thing with a teacher and a student. If the student just comes to class and just comes to class and does the work, but then the student finds out that they don't know how and they never converse with the teacher, then they never learn. They never grow. Amen? All right. So let's move forward. Let's look at this, this conversation, the purpose of conversation, the purpose of conversation. What is a conversation? Anybody know? What, what is a conversation? Dialogue between two people. Amen. Thank you, Brother Michael. Dialogue between two people. Uh, and the key words, and that is between two people. Amen. You can be talking at somebody <laughs> and not having a conversation. All right. A conversation means that you are exchanging. I'm talking and then you're talking. Now we are conversing. Amen. Not conversate. That's not a word. Converse. <laughs> We're converse back and forth, conversing. All right. When you look at the word uh, converse. It's two words. It's con and it's verse. The word con means with. The word verse means turn. All right. So if I take my hand like this and I turn it, it's going from one way to another, back and forth, back and forth. All right. With. That means with something together. So together, when we converse, it's together and it's back and forth, back and forth. That's a conversation. Amen. That's a conversation. So we're talking about God having a conversation with God. If you are talking to God, what is the expectation? That you will hear from him. You will hear from him. Amen. That he'll respond. Amen. All right. Let's, uh, let's go into our lesson. Let's get into some of our scriptures. I want to start with our central verse. Uh, Psalm 55, verses 16 and 17. If you have it, uh, it's just two verses. I will cry unto God most high, and to God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that will swallow me up. Selah. God shall Amen. send forth his mercy. Oh, Brother Michael. Was that is this is this Psalm fifty five? Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Psalms fifty five. Oh, I'm sorry. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon, I will pray. Will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Amen. Thank you, Brother Michael. All right. So, as for me, I will call upon the Lord, and the Lord shall save me. And so we know the writer is his David, amen, uh, the psalmist at this time. And he's talking about um, calling upon the Lord. And we're talking about the purpose of conversation. And the purpose of conversation, one of the purposes is God hears when we speak. Amen. So the purpose of conversing is so that God can hear us. If we never talk to God, amen, if we never, we know that he can hear thoughts. We know that. But God wants to talk to you. He wants to talk to us. He wants to converse with us. All right. So one of the purposes is that when we talk to him, he hears us. And we see that in these verses. Uh, David said, as for me, I will call upon God. So when the call is made to God, the writer states that the Lord shall save him. Amen. Meaning that when the call was made, God heard it. All right. He heard it. And that word call in Hebrew, it means uh, to address by name, it means to invite, and it means to proclaim. All right? So the name Jehovah, it simply means the Lord. So when he says, as for me, I will call upon God and the Lord, he's saying God's name, Jehovah. He's saying Jehovah shall save me. So he's calling God by his name. Amen? Amen? He's getting God's attention. All right. 
So when we call upon the Lord, we're addressing him for who he is. And this is inviting him. Again, the word call means to invite. It's inviting him to have a conversation with you. Amen. It's inviting him to have a conversation. And sometimes God answers back. Or sometimes God just provides the need according to the call. All right. Sometimes he just provides me. Lord, I need strength. He may not say, OK, I'll give it to you. He may just provide the strength. All right. The point is that he always answers because he always hears us. All right. And that's imperative to know when we're talking about a conversation, because you don't want to be talking to somebody and having a full fledged, you know, uh, 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 what you thought was a conversation. And you said all of these things and they didn't hear a word you said. Hey Amen. they went to this whole sol soliloquy about life and what's going on and they didn't hear anything you said. And it's like, oh, what was that? Can you repeat all that again? God's not like that. We don't have to say a bunch of words. You can say a, a thousand words or you can say two words. God hears whatever it is. Amen. Mm -hmm. He hears. Then the writer goes on in verse 17. He says, evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. All right. Evening and morning and noon. Look like he covered everything except night. Amen. Because he probably sleep at that time. <laughs> but even in morning and noon, I shall pray. And this goes back to what we talked about a couple of weeks ago when the scripture says that we should pray without what? Ceasing. Thessalonians. Ceasing. Amen. Pray without ceasing. So the writer is scheduling a time frame to when he prays to God. And he says, evening, morning, and noon. All right. And we uh, we see this the first time we see this. Anybody remember who prayed three times a day in the Old Testament? Daniel who prayed. Daniel. Daniel. Amen. So we see this is continuing a scheduled time. Daniel prayed three times a day. Amen. Facing Jerusalem. So David, he's saying he prays morning, evening, morning and noon. And we can attribute that to Daniel who prayed, prayed three times a day. Now, notice how evening is first, morning is second, and noon is third. And that's because in those times, remember, their time frame was different from our time frame. The evening around six was the beginning of the day for them. Amen. So when he said that he prays evening, that's the beginning of his day. And then goes into uh, noon and then morning. I mean, morning and then noon. All right. So it's just their time frame. It's different from our time frame. Our time frame would be morning, noon, and evening. And then night, if you want to add that. Okay. But the thing is that there was a time frame. He took out an allotted time to communicate with God, to converse with God. No matter the time frame, he sets apart time to converse with God. Amen. All right. So God hears us when we speak. Another purpose of conversation is that God is responsive to conversation. He will respond. All right. And that is in our next one, in our background reading, Psalm 57, 2 and 3. You can read that one, Brother Mike. All right. I will cry to God most high unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Amen. Thank you. All right. So going back to our central verse, it gives us an idea uh, of what God does when he hears us. Amen. It says that he shall save me. But it doesn't say how. Amen. It just says that he shall save me. Here we see that God's response comes directly from heaven. He says he shall sin from heaven. Amen. And that whatever needs to be performed, he will do it. All right. So whatever the need is, 
he will perform it and meet the need. Now, the word performs means to simply complete it. He's going to complete the task, whatever the task is, whatever you need from him. All things, he will complete it. And the thing we don't necessarily need to know is what God is going to do, how he's going to do it. And a lot of times we get caught up in, well, Lord, how are you going to do it? How are you going to bless me? How are you going to get me out of this situation? How are you going to heal me? Don't worry about how I'm going to do it. <laughs> Amen. Just worry. Just know that I will do it and don't worry. He'll do it. Amen. He'll do it because he hears us. We just need a response. So when we converse, Lord, we just want a response. Amen. Yes, you will. No, you won't. Or, ju or just wait. Amen. But we're just looking for the response because the response indicates that he heard us, that he hears us. Amen. And if he heard us, we know that he will not turn a deaf ear to us. But here the writer tells us, God sends his mercy. God sends his truth, which is telling us that whatever we need, that God is responsive. He will respond. Uh, case in point, we talked about this uh, a couple of weeks back. Remember Elijah? Amen. Remember Mount Carmel? Remember the sacrifices? Remember the altar? And Elijah prayed. And what did God do? He responded. He sent down fire. <laughs> By what, oh. Sister BB? He sent down fire. He responded with fire. Amen. That was a response because of the prayers of Elijah. Amen. Elijah had his ear to God's mouth and God heard him. Amen. So when he called upon the Lord, the Lord came down and he burnt that thing up. He burnt that whole altar up. Everything. He responded. Now, he doesn't always respond in a voice. Amen. Just like in this particular instance, he responded in action. He burned everything up. But if we have that line of communication with him, amen, we should be in expectation of his response, whether it's by voice or whether it's by action. All right. The problem comes, amen, the problem comes, the problem that arises is in John, the book of John, the 10th chapter in the 27th verse. And it says, my sheep, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. My sheep hear my voice, amen. So if you can't hear God's voice, amen, are you a sheep? That's a question we got to ask. Amen. You have to be able to hear God's voice. And he says that his sheep hear his voice. And to distinguish his voice from the voice of the devil, amen, to distinguish his voice from the voice of your own self, just coming up with, 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 with things, your flesh. Amen. You have to be able to distinguish these things from God. And if we are in a continual relationship or communication with God, amen, it's not going to be hard to understand his voice. I, at my job, I'm on the phone talking to customers and it's to a point now where when the customer calls, I know exactly who they are because I know their voice. And when they call me, they know exactly who they're talking to. They don't mistake me for nobody else because they know my voice. But that came over a period of time of communicating, talking, amen, listening, hearing. It's the same with God. When we are in relationship and communication with him, we know when God is speaking or we should know when God is speaking. Amen. We know, you know, God not going to tell you to go climb the bridge and jump off head first. That's the devil. Amen. So we should know when God is speaking. His sheep hear his voice. All right. So that all that being said, the purpose of conversation is so that God can hear us. And so that we can hear God. Amen. That's the whole purpose of conversing. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, any questions or comments before we move on? All right.
let's uh let's continue forward yes i'm sorry Go ahead, Sister Angie. i was trying to push uh several buttons <laughs> okay uh, my question is just because since you use john he says my sheep hears my voice so and we said earlier that his response is not necessarily Gonna, we're going to hear from him, but we'll see and understand that he has done something which tells us that he heard us, right? So are, are, are we compared? Those are two different actions in responding to us. Am I right? Or is this saying his voice, well, however he responds to us, that's his voice? Or is that two different kinds of responses? That's my question. Um, an action... And in voice is two different kinds of responses. Um, when he says, my sheep know my voice, he's basically saying that I'm the shepherd and you are the sheep. So whenever I call, I mean, whenever I call, uh, you should know that I'm calling you. However I go about communicating, because a call is a communication, you should know that it's me. So although it's two different, and action and the voice is two different things, they both involve communication. I can give you a gift and never say anything. But I'm communicating to you, amen, that can be a communication of me saying I love you, or that can be a communication of me saying that I want you to have this. So although there are two separate things, they both involve communication. All right, communication is not always by voice, amen. Yeah. Amen, I'm sorry, <laughs> amen. Okay, God bless you, Sister Angie. All right, um, let's look at, Psalm 73. All right. And we're going to look at the benefit of this conversation, the scheduled conversation. Psalm 73. Now, one of the benefits of conversing or conversation with God is that conversation brings us closer to God. Just like we just mentioned earlier with, with marriage. Amen. It brings us closer to God. If you never speak to God, amen, how do you get closer? Amen. How do you build rapport? How do you build relationship? All right. Psalm 73, 25 through 28. Mm -hmm. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all of them that go a whoring from thee. But it's good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy words. Amen. God bless you, Brother Mike. That 25th verse says, Whom have I in heaven but thee? There is none upon the earth that I desire besides thee. Amen. Uh, when you can't talk to mom, when you can't talk to dad, amen, on earth, uh, or when you need somebody to just listen without judgment, without ridicule, without saying, oh, well, having something negative to say, amen, all right, who are you going to talk to? Because you can talk to people, all right, but people are always going to have a preconceived notion, whether you, whether you think they do or not. Um, they're always going to have a preconceived notion about whatever your situation is. Or how you handle the situation. They may not say it, but that's just the way we operate. Amen. Oh, that that was that wasn't smart. You know, that was wrong. That's just the way we operate. Amen. God already knows you. He already knows what you've done. He already knows what you're going to do. So anything that you tell him, he won't have a preconceived notion because he already knows everything about you. Amen. He knows you better than anybody else on this earth. Anybody else in heaven, all right? He already knows what you're going through, amen? Somebody who's always working, but he's never busy, that's God, <laughs> amen? I know a lot of people that work, and they're just always busy. God is the only person who's always at work, 
but never busy. Amen? He's never busy. Somebody who can hear every word, every speech, every thought from every individual in the entire world, yet still have more than enough time to tend to you. That's God. Amen? Amen. Only God in heaven. The only person in heaven and in earth who can do that. Only God. He is the best listener you could ever talk to. Amen. When you don't have nobody else, guess what? You will always have God. Hallelujah. You will always have God. That's what that twenty that 25th verse is saying. That's what David is trying to convey. Whom have I in heaven but thee? There is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. Why? Because I can just sit down and talk to you. And you will listen to everything that I'm going through. Hallelujah. Then we get to that 26th verse. It says, my flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Amen. So what does he mean by my portion? He means he is all for you. Amen. He is your God. Give you an example. We got a whole big cake. I start to slice in the cake. I take a slice and I give you a portion. That slice don't belong to the person next to you. Don't belong to the person across from you. But it is all yours because it's your portion. And it's the same with God. God is big enough for everybody. But the portion that you get from him is all yours. It belongs to you. He belongs to you. He has a personal relationship with you. Amen. Brother Michael, sister kid. Amen. Deacon, uh, uh, Deacon, uh, uh, Deacon, uh, Sean. Sorry, D. <laughs> he has a personal relationship. Amen. I see you, sister BB. A personal relationship. So there's a portion of God that belongs to you. Amen. And the Bible says that when we get to heaven, we're going to experience the fullness of God. Right now we get the portion. Hallelujah. One day we're going to get the fullness. Glory be to God. But it's your portion. Amen. Verse 27 says, For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all of them that go a whoring from thee. Amen. So when we look at far from you, that implies that they are not close to God, that they are distant. And how can we converse if we're not close? Now, modern technology has made that capable because of phones. <laughs> Amen. They didn't have that back then. Amen. If you was in if you was in, 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 in Athens and, and I was in Galilee, Amen, we had to meet up somewhere. Amen. You was too far. Hallelujah. Remember, it's context. Their time was different from our time. But there was no closeness. If you're not close to God, you can't converse with God. You're too far. And the further you are, the further you'll stay. Amen. The further you are from God, the further you'll stay away from God. Because the word perish means to wander away, or it means to destroy, or it means to die. So the further you stay away, the further you'll wander. And the further you'll wander, amen, you go into uh, 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 an existence of death. Because you have been cut off now. You can get so far from God that you cut yourself off entirely from him. It doesn't mean that he lets you go. You cut yourself off. You cut that line of communication because you wandered off into some, some demonic stuff. Amen. Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. But did you know? That when you are outside of the presence of God, that you are continually dying. Amen. We were born in this natural flesh. We see that when we're babies, we're all wrinkly. Amen. And when we grow up, kind of smooth out, things begin to grow, muscles get bigger. And the older we get, we start to revert back. Amen. You start to shrink a little bit, you get a little bit more wrinkly. So you're living every single day to die. That's what the flesh does. It's dying every minute. Amen.
every minute is dying. When you are outside of God's presence, you are dying consistently, continuously. But when you are in the presence of God, amen, there is life. There is life, amen. Because nothing dead is in God's presence. Okay, you can't praise God dead. You can't worship God dead. There has to be life. Amen. Amen. So when we are in his presence, that's a spiritual thing. He gives us life. He gives us life. Mm. So this is why we need to be close to God. The closeness is important. Stay by God because he's going to continue to give you life and that more abundantly mm. through who? who? Christ, his son. Mm. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. You can say it. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. That's where our life comes from, the closeness. Now, that, there's a term there uh, that says, um, thou hast destroyed all of them that go a whoring from thee. Amen. And we know that in the Bible, uh, a whore or, or was a, a harlot. Amen. And this was a, a woman that was promiscuous. Amen. And she didn't subscribe to a lifestyle uh, of having one part. Amen. She was sleeping with multiple men, which means that she was unfaithful. Right. So the term uh, to go a whoring basically means somebody who is unfaithful. So when you continually wander away from God and, and disconnect that line of communication, you are being unfaithful. Because most of the times when you are wandering from God, you are wandering to something else. Amen. Something's got your attention. Something's grabbing you. Something's pulling you away. Amen. And it's usually fueled by our desires. Amen. All right. In verse 28, he says, but it is good for me to draw near to God. It is good for me to draw near to God. Drawing near to God is how we build relationship. And that is through communication, through prayer, and through conversation with him. He'll speak to you through his word. Amen. And he'll respond in word or in action, which is communication. Amen. It's all communication. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so conversation brings us closer to God. There's a uh, there's action here. I see a hand, Sister T. Um, God bless. I mean, I would. I mean, I was just speaking on that. To in order for you to communicate to commune with God, you have to communicate. And I, I, you know, I stress that point a lot to um, anyone that I speak with. How can you say that you love this person, you love that person, if you're not communicating with them? In order for you to get to, to God, you have to communicate with him and commune with him. So thank you for saying that because I say it all the time you have to communicate to commune with God and, and everyone around you uh, um, just thanks for hitting on that for me amen God bless you communication anybody else any other questions or comments uh, sorry. all right but yes it, it's very important uh Communication. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's very important. Um, communication, because, um, like we said, we, we look at a natural relationship. Amen. Um, if there, if if you go through a whole relationship and never talk, it's like you know nothing about each other. Amen. Even before you get into a relationship, when you're courting, amen, you're conversing, you get to know one another. Amen. And this is the benchmark of our relationship with God. When when God saves you uh, and you learned about him, you learned about him by reading your Bible. Amen. This is how we learned about him. Amen. But we also have to learn to pray and talk to him because he wants to talk to us. 
God wants to speak to us. I, 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 I'm under the notion that some people believe that God does not speak anymore. And I don't believe that at all. Some people actually believe that God does not speak like he spoke in those times. Amen. But God still speaks. Why? Because he's still God and he's unchanging. So if he did it before, he'll do it again. If he did it that time, he's still doing it in this time. Amen. He's still doing. He's still speaking. Still speaking. I remember when I first got saved. And, and and I went home that night and I prayed and, and God spoke clear as day. He scared the daylights out of me, but I heard him. <laughs> I heard his voice. Amen. I heard his voice and I knew that that was God. I didn't have to go and ask, is this God talking to me? I knew it was God. Amen. And that was the start of our relationship building. Talk to me. Just talk to me. Amen. Just talk to him. All right. Uh, just kid, you ask something? No, I remember when I first, it was right after I got baptized and I was getting ready to leave for work. And I heard, trust in him, trust in me. Like it was just simple, like, who said that? <laughs> <laughs> and then my radio station went to 1100 from KBLX. I don't know how that happened either. Mm. That's crazy. That's God. <laughs> God will speak through a radio. He'll speak through the Bible. God's talking. He talked to a donkey. Ain't my radio station. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Sister Winnie, I seen your hand. Yes, I can speak for only myself. The Lord saved me late in life, but of course, by being in the church. Um, you know, since I was uh, born, actually. Um, I feel that God works with you as well. And again, I can only speak for myself. What I mean by that is, um, like you say, God knows you. And he knows everything about you. Knows every hair on your head. And he knew that about me. So God has always been with me although being saved late in life. And God also, along with Jesus, shaped and molded me from the, you know, from the time I arrived in this, in this world to the time the Lord finally saved me. And I just say that everyone has a different story and the Lord and Jesus works with us all in different ways. But for me, that's what happened to me. The Lord shaped and molded and tried and tribulationed my life to get where I am today. And I'm grateful and thankful. And uh, that's what happened to me. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for many testimony. Amen. And like you said, God works with each and every one of us uh, differently, individually. Amen. Because there's certain strengths that we may have that others don't possess and vice versa. Certain weaknesses that other people may have. But as long as we know that God is in the doing. Amen. He'll mold you. He'll shape you. He'll talk with you. He'll walk with you. You mentioned the trials and tribulations. He'll walk with you through those trials and tribulations. Amen. We look back at the three Hebrew boards. They were, they were in that furnace. But Jesus was there too. Amen. So there's nothing that we can suffer in this life that Jesus has not and will not experience with us and for us. Amen. Because he already did it for us. Amen. He already did it for us. All right. So um, let's let's look at Acts. Uh, in this 10th chapter in Acts, there's a particular story uh, that went on here. And uh, we start at that 28th verse, but I, I just want to kind of paraphrase what happened prior to that so we get the full picture of what's happening in this 10th chapter. So there is a, there's an Italian man named Cornelius, and Cornelius was a Gentile converted into Judaism. Uh, now, normally we would say that that's a proselyte, but um, from doing the research, they say that he may have not been a proselyte uh, because he was... He, he was noticing how the Jews um, practiced their religion, and he was trying to do that also, but he never fully was converted, amen, uh, but he practiced what they practiced, 
and we're going to see how God gets his attention. Uh, God gave him a vision, gave him a vision of an angel. And the angel told him, I mean, that he sees how Cornelius gives gifts or offerings to the poor. And that by doing that, those gifts or those offerings has ascended to God as an offering to God. Amen. And if we look back in Matthew in the 25th chapter in the 35th verse, Jesus, uh, he says something about uh, when you feed the poor, you're feeding him. You know, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. Amen. So this is connected to that scripture. You know, when we feed the poor, it's like we're feeding Jesus. Amen. Feeding the need. So the angel tells him that in doing those actions, those actions have went up to God as an offering to God. And he tells this man, Cornelius, to send some of his men to the city of Joppa and ask for a man named Peter. And we know Peter, the disciple, the apostle Peter. So the men go to Joppa and they arrive and the spirit tells Peter to go to them. Now, prior to all this happening, Peter also received a vision. Amen. Um, and it's a long story, so I don't really, really want to get into it because it kind of deviate. But basically, God gave Peter a vision um, and the vision had something to do with why these men were coming to see about Peter. Right. So. These men come to see about Peter. Peter, uh, the spirit tells Peter to go with them, which was unnatural because usually Jews did not go into foreign men's house. But Peter did so. They stay with Peter. They go back to Cornelius. So when they get there, they get to the Cornelius. This is where we get to this 28th verse. Amen. And I'll go ahead and read it. It says, and he said unto them, ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation. But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. And this is pertaining to the vision that God had showed Peter prior to him leave. Amen. The animals. the animals, amen. And he didn't want to eat them, but God said, you know the vision, there you go. <laughs> um, verse 29, it says, therefore, Came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for. I asked, therefore, for what intent ye have sent for me. So Peter is asking them, you sent for me, why am I here? Amen. Why did you call me to come here? It says, and Cornelius said, four days ago I was fasting until this hour. And in the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. And said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. So Cornelius gives this prayer. And God responds to the prayer by telling Cornelius to send these men to a man named Peter. And Peter was God's chosen apostle, disciple. What Cornelius didn't know that it was that his prayer was going to cause him to come into the fruition of really converting into being a Christian. Right. Remember, we said he wasn't fully converted at this point, but the prayer that he gave up to God, God heard it. And God sent his man to go get his chosen man to bring his chosen man back to Cornelius so that Peter can give them a word. Amen. Peter gave him a word. So what, what, what do we get from this story and how does it relate to a scheduled conversation? Um, it does not matter what your background is. It does not matter who you are. It does not matter your race, your ethnicity, your age. It does not matter. None of that matters. What matters is your communication with God. Amen. You are not too old to talk to God. You are not too young to talk to God. Amen. You're not. This man was not a Jew. But God heard his prayer. Nonetheless, nevertheless, he heard his prayer. Amen. And caused him to send the man of God to his place. 
And this is why God gave Peter that vision, because Peter thought that certain things were not common. And certain things were unclean, especially for a Jew to go into a Gentile's house. But God was saying, if I called you to go, just go. There was nothing uncommon or unclean because if I'm dealing with it, I'm going to clean it up. Hallelujah. I'm going to make it right. I sent you to this man because I heard his prayers and I want to answer his prayers. And you are going to be the one that brings forth what I want him to have. And anybody know what they received that day? Holy Spirit. Spirit. (laughs) Holy Spirit. Amen. This is one of the first instances that we see Gentiles receive the Holy Spirit in the new in the New Testament, in the new the New Age Church. It's the first instance. Because Peter came and he preached to those Gentiles and the power of the Holy Ghost filled. Cornelius didn't know that he needed something from God, but because of his prayer. Amen. And regardless of his stature, regardless of his 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 belief, regardless if he was a Gentile or a Jew, he prayed because he saw something. Amen. God gave him a vision. And not only that, but the Jews that were around him, they bore witness to the movement of God that wasn't supposed to happen because they were Gentiles. But they saw it for them for their own eyes. Amen. They witnessed it for their own eyes. Amen. Isn't that God? I'm going to take something that you think shouldn't be happening and I'm going to make it happen and I'm going to turn it around so everybody can see that I am God. And he got the glory. Amen. And if he created it, it's good. It's good. Yeah. It's good. If he made it, it's good. And we corrupt some things, amen, but God cleaned things up. Amen. There's nothing that we can corrupt that God can clean up. Amen. Including ourselves. He cleaned me up. Amen. I was a wretch undone. I was corrupt. Then I met Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So, it doesn't matter. Amen. It doesn't matter who you are. Black, white, Latino. It doesn't matter. And we need to, uh, don't get caught up in, in, in all of these, these, these things that the devil tries to bring to our attention and these vices to say that, oh, you're not supposed to do it this way. You're not supposed to pray that way. Amen. I'm having a conversation with God. Amen. I may not know how to pray, but I can talk. Hallelujah. And as long as I can talk, he can hear me. Amen. He can hear me. Thank you, Lord. Which, which then it, it brings us to, to understand something about timing. Because we're talking about a scheduled prayer. And God tells us that there is a scheduled time for everything. Amen. There's a time for everything. We look at Ecclesiastes, that third chapter. And we all know the Ecclesiastes. We know Ecclesiastes 3. Amen. There's a time to everything. There is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born. A time to die. A time to plant. A time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill. A time to heal. A time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. It kind of sound like uh, Solomon was rapping. (laughs) He had a cadence going on. Amen. (laughs) Like he was making music. Amen. Time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Said it's a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow. Amen. A time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time of peace. So we see that there is a time for everything. And I think the the, the question tonight is that are we making time for God in all of these things that we are doing, is there time that we are implementing for God? And I'm not just talking about Sunday because that is a given. <laughs> we, we know we do that. That's what we do. We go to church. Amen. But outside of Sunday, do you have time for God on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Do you make time for him on Saturday? We know we make time on Tuesday nights. We hear on Bible study. So we're making time now. Amen. But outside of this, do we make time outside of our scheduled routine of doing uh, the routine thing? 
church, Bible study, amen, the routine, the religious things? Do we have a set time that we have that we spend isolated from everybody else and just alone with God? And that's what the, the, the whole lesson is about, having a scheduled time, amen, a scheduled time. And if you look at how Ecclesiastes is broken down, uh, you'll notice in the verses that there is a doing and an undoing. There is a this, and then there's the opposite. Amen. There's a time to be born, and then there's a time to die. There's a time to kill, and there's a time to heal. So for every thing that goes on, there's always an opposite that goes on. Either way, it's still time. Amen. There's still a time for good, and there's still a time for evil. Amen. So when we look at it in that aspect, uh, the, 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 the doing and the undoing and the opposing for every action. And we see that there's a scheduled time for everything. All right. A scheduled time for everything. At a funeral, you're not laughing because that's not the time to laugh. Amen. That's the time to move. Amen. Unless you're rejoicing, then that's different. Some people rejoice at funerals. Amen. Because they go they go on to the other side. Amen. So it can be a time of rejoicing, but we see that there are scheduled times for certain things. So with this setup, with this setup, God is showing us, amen, that there is a definite time for you to communicate with me. Amen. But here's the catch. Here's the catch. That scheduled time does not necessarily need a condition attached to it. Meaning that you don't just have to talk to God when you are sick. Lord, I need healing. You don't just have to talk to God when you need that financial blessing. When that payment is due and you don't have the money. Lord, I need you to work it out. Amen. But God is saying that there is 24 hours in a day. And at any time of that day. You are allowed to just talk to me just for the sake of talking to me, just because of who I am. It don't have to be a condition attached to it. Some people will only talk to you because you meet a condition that they need. Amen. Well, I'm I'm, 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 going to talk to this person because I know that they can meet this need and they can make me feel good about myself or they can make me feel good about the situation. And that's okay to talk to God like that. But when he's talking about a conversation, it does not have to have a condition. Amen. I don't want somebody to just talk to me because they want something out of me. Amen. But talk to me because you love talking to me. Talk to me because you just want to hear my voice. Sometimes I just want to hear God speak. Lord, I don't want nothing. Just just say hi. Hallelujah. Just say I love you. Just say uh, I'm blessed. Amen. And sometimes I talk to him because I just want him to hear my voice. I want him to know that I love him. I want him to know that I adore him, that I worship him. Amen. Because of all the good things that he's done in my life. Hallelujah. So there does not have to be a condition attached to this time. Amen. It does not have to be a condition. Now, uh, the reason, talk about it being scheduled. It's scheduled time. It's because we have to take the time. To communicate with God. And that's what it means by schedule. It's not saying that you are putting God on a schedule. Right? Because you can't put God on a schedule. Lord, I'm going to talk to you here and then that's it. It's like, no. Schedule timing means that we take the time out of what we are doing to say, you know what? This time belongs to you. And nobody else. It belongs to you, Lord. I'm not penciling you into my schedule, amen. If anything, <laughs> God be penciling us because he got everybody talking to him. But like I said earlier, he don't do that. He don't say, okay, Brother Michael, I'm going to talk to you tonight at 3 o'clock. Now, he might, amen, but there's no, there's no, oh, I'm just going to talk to you at this particular time. There's always time to talk to God, amen. There's always time to converse with God, all right? There's always time. All right. So looking at that pattern, the doing and the undoing, if we go by that pattern, if there is a time to pray, does that mean there's a time to not pray? If 
is there a time to not pray? That's the question. Well, they say pray about everything. I would say yes. Pray about everything. Not to pray. The Bible, the Bible says to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. So I got two pray without ceasings, and then I got one. <laughs> pray about <laughs> I say, how about when you're listening to him respond to your prayer? Yeah, you jump the gun. How about that? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's that's perfect. That's perfect. That's or perfect. when you're just sitting in his presence as well. Amen. Yeah. Still. Amen. Amen. That's perfect. That's exactly. I didn't have to answer the question. Amen. That's why I ask these questions. I want you guys to answer. Amen. Dick, I see your hand. Hello, back and all that's part of prayer. Part of prayer mm -hmm. is when you're talking to God. You got to wait for his response. You just sit there. All of that covers everything. So all of that is part of the prayer. Because like you said, communication is a two-way situation. When right. you go in and you got to sit there and just listen to God and meditate and wait for the answer. So all of that is right. And the Bible says pray without ceasing. Men should always pray and not pray. Great job, uh, uh, Minister Elder Elder. Bless you, Dave. Bless you, Dave. Amen. So we should pray without ceasing. But there are times in our prayer, amen, where we just got to be quiet. Amen. Be quiet. Amen. Listen, because you can't listen if you always talking. Amen. You can't hear if you you keep talking. You have to be quiet. Amen. So that was a, that was like a two way thing. All right. So there is a time to just sit still. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Amen. Wait for his answer. There's a time to talk to God and bluntly there's a time to just shut up be quiet amen be quiet let me do this let me work it out amen and it's not a shut up not in a rude way uh to say that you know don't talk to god but it's just be quiet and listen listen you asked me a question then let me give you the response all right if you keep talking you won't hear the response let me respond amen so even though you can, you, you're still praying, you wait for that response. Amen. And it is possible to communicate without saying words. It's possible. Amen. Look at us. Body language. Amen. I don't have to say a word. Facial expression. I don't have to say a word. Somebody say something crazy and you. That's said it all. Amen. When you're angry, facial expression. It says it all. Amen. When you're tired, you slump like this. That says it all. Amen. I don't have to say a word. You know I'm tired. Amen. So in a spiritual sense, we can communicate with God without saying a word. Amen. It's by the posture of our hearts. Amen. How our hearts are sitting. And we communicate with God without speaking by just having faith. Faith is a communication that lets God know that I believe and I trust in whatever you are going to do. Amen. Example, because I don't want to say that and then I give you a biblical example. Let's go and look at the woman with the issue of blood. She did not have a conversation with Jesus. Amen. She heard that he was in town and he was going to see about this girl. Amen. And she said, if I can get to this man, I don't even have to talk to him. But if I can just touch the hem of his garment, hallelujah, I know I'll be healed. Amen. She didn't say a word. Now, she talked after the fact because he said, who touched me? But prior to that, she didn't say a word to Jesus. It was her faith that communicated her situation. And Jesus heard and felt her faith without ever saying a word to her. Hallelujah. Didn't have to say a word until he recognized that she was the woman that touched him. And he told her that she was healed. Your faith had made you old. You didn't have to say a word. Hallelujah. So sometimes God just wants us to communicate by faith. Trust in me. Even if you never hear me give you a response, just know that I heard it. I heard it and I'm working it out. Your communication now has to be faith. Lord, I know you heard it. 
I'm going to wait and I'm going to trust in you. Hallelujah. So faith, it can be communicated without saying anything. Simply believe. Amen. Believe. Amen. Even with that, it's time to, there's a time to believe and there's a time to not believe. Right? The doctor told you that you was going to die three months from now. You don't have to believe that. Amen. You don't have to believe it. You can, but you don't have to. Why? Because they do not have the final say. If God didn't say it, I don't have to believe it. And then again, I go back to that faith and communicating with God. Lord, I'm going to communicate with faith on this one. I'm going to talk to you in faith on this one. Hallelujah. Because I don't feel like you're done with me yet. Thank you, Lord. So there's so many ways to communicate with God. Amen. Let this be an example of how we communicate with him and move forward with communicating with him and not just basic. I'm, I go to church. Amen. I attend these classes. Amen. But we need to set aside that time. Amen. Set aside that time. All right. Uh, we're going to go into our final section. The greatest example of all. Any questions or comments? Any questions or comments? If not, let's uh, let's go to Hebrews. This is uh, one of our background readings. This will be the last one we get into. Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. We're talking about communicating and communication. Amen. And what better example can we get? Or who who can who is the prime person we can get these examples from? Who who should we look towards in everything for the greatest example? Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus. All right, uh, Brother Michael, if you don't mind reading Hebrews, let's start. Let's start with uh, verses one through four. One through four. Yes, sir. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men and the and things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin. Who can have compassion? on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way for that he himself also is compassion with infirmity and by reason hereof he ought as for the people so also for himself to offer for sin and no man taketh this honor unto himself but he that is called of god as with Aaron. amen so um, this chapter, it starts off with uh, identifying uh, the high priest or a high priest. Amen. And in that first verse, um, it lets us know that uh, the high priests were ordained by God. Amen. They were ordained by God. They were taken from men. They were regular men like Aaron. Aaron was the first high priest. Amen. Um, and uh, in the Le uh, Leviticus, amen. And they were not chosen by men were taken from men but chosen by God and their purpose was to offer gifts to God on behalf of the men and offer sacrifices for forgiveness of sin not only for themselves but for all the rest of you know the men and the women amen that was the duty of the high priest uh, they were the only ones that can walk into the holy of the holy of holies in the tabernacle amen nobody else could go beyond that that bill only the high priest so they had specific duties that were ordained to them and to them own okay uh, when we look at that second verse who can have compassion on the ignorant amen and on them that are out of the way again we talked about being far away from god for that he himself also can pass with infirmity uh, they are not considered better than men that's what that's saying the high priests were not considered better than men why because they also had sin. Amen. And that's why they were chosen because they can identify and be uh, compassionate with somebody who had sin because they, they themselves can identify with sin as well. Amen. So they know what it's like to deal with. It. They knew what it was like to deal with it. And then we go down to that fourth verse and it says, and no man taketh his honor unto himself, but he that is called of God. Amen. They don't take glory and they don't take honor for themselves. Talking about the role of a high priest. 
They did not take glory and they did not take honor for themselves because they were called of God who alone deserves that glory and that honor. Amen. So these were the qualifications and the characteristics of a high priest. All right. So then we go to our background read, verses 5 through 10. Brother Michael, this will be the last time. <laughs> so also Christ glorified not himself to be made in high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. As he said also in another place, Thou art a, a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Amen. So in those first four verses, we see what the high priest was and the duties. Amen. So in these next five verses, we see that these qualifications were the same qualifications that Jesus had. Amen. And this is why he became and he was looked at as the high priest. So Christ himself, he became our high priest because he was ordained by God, just like the high priest were. Amen. To do what the earthly high priest, amen, could not do. All right. That's the difference. They could only go so far. But Jesus was a high priest that did things that earthly high priests could not do. And this is why when they glorified him. He always gave glory to God, just as the high priests were supposed to do. Every time they glorified Jesus, what did he do? He always gave glory to his father. Amen. So he had the role of a high priest. He was the son of God. He was a high priest. Amen. Because this was the qualification. Remember, they're not supposed to be honored. So he always deflected it to his father. Now, the most that earthly high priest could do was give sacrifice. Amen. And that wouldn't suffice because it had to be done time and time again. So Jesus comes as a high priest to not only give a sacrifice, but to become the sacrifice and the only sacrifice to die once. You had to kill nothing else after Jesus died. Amen. No more bullets, no more doves, no more pigeons. Amen. No more rams, no more goats. Jesus did sacrifice. the perfect sacrifice. Amen. He was the perfect sacrifice. Thank you, Sister Bibi. Now, uh, on a side note, um, Jesus was different. Amen. He was different. In the Old Testament, uh, high priests could not take the role as a king or perform kingly duties and vice versa couldn't be a, a kingly priest. There was only one man in the Bible that held this role as the kingly priest, and that's the one that we see in these verses, uh, Melchizedek. Amen. And you, you can find that in Genesis in the 8th chapter. But he was the only one that had this role as a king and a priest. Other than that, no one could be a king and a priest at the same time. Amen. And since Melchizedek, there had been no other until Jesus. Amen. Till it was prophesied. And it was prophesied in Zechariah. Zechariah the 6th chapter. And the 12th and 13th verse. It says. And speak unto him saying. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts. Saying behold the man whose name is the branch. That's Jesus. And he shall be a priest. Upon his throne. Alright. So the prophecy went out that Jesus would be a priest. But he would be a priest upon a throne. So he would be a priest. But he would also be a king. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And it says, and shall grow out in that place and shall build the temple of the Lord. Amen. So he was the kingly priest or the priestly king. Jesus was the high priest who had the kingly disposition. Remember, they were calling him. The reason why he was crucified, they said, because he was the king of the Jews. So he was the high priest. 
He was the king. Amen. This was who Jesus was. Hallelujah. And then we look at that seventh verse. It says, who in the days of his flesh, in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, in the days of his flesh, when he had offered prayers and supplications with a strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Amen. In the days of his flesh, he offered up both prayers and supplications. What is that? Communication. What is that? Conversation. And it said that he did it with loud crying. He did it with tears to the one who was able to save him from death. Hallelujah. And he was heard because of his fear. So even Jesus, the high priest, amen, in his time of suffering, he found time to converse with his father. Amen. In the days of his flesh, meaning when he was here on earth, says he offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears. Where did he do that at? The Garden of Gethsemane. Amen. While he was on the cross, he was yet conversing with his father on behalf. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He still was talking to God. In his trials and tribulations, he could have been like, I'm not saying nothing else. But he still had that line of communication open to his father while he was being crucified. Hallelujah. It said to him that was able to save him from death. Now, we know that God did not rescue Jesus from death. He did. not He rescued him out of death. Amen. Jesus indeed died, but he didn't stay dead because God saved him from out of death, meaning that he rose from death. Amen. That was the rescue. That was the saving. And he saved Jesus out of death so that Jesus can save us out of death. Glory be to God so that he can do it. Thank you, Lord. It said, and he was heard in that he feared. And it doesn't mean fear like he was scared, but he feared out of reverence. He reverenced his father and God heard him because of that reverence. When he was in that garden praying for all of us and praying for that cup to bath, but nevertheless, your will be done. Hallelujah. There was reverence in the words that he spoke because he knew that it was not about him, but it was about the will of his father. So when we communicate with God, we have to know that, Lord, it's not always about what I want, but I'm communicating because I want you to give me what I need. Hallelujah. Because if you give me what I need, then I won't have any wants. That's why David said the Lord is my shepherd. The shepherd provides the need. I shall not want. I don't need to want because the shepherd has already provided the need because I communicate with him. I converse with him. I take time and I sit out time in my day to say, Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. I don't always ask him for everything, but I got to ask him. I will ask him. But there's times where I just want to say, God, you're great. God, you're merciful. God, you're glorious. God, you're marvelous. God, you're wonderful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So Jesus is the example of scheduled communication. He took the time before he was crucified to talk with God. Hallelujah. We see multiple times that when he performed the miracle. What did he do after he performed the miracle? He went somewhere and he prayed. Hallelujah. After he fed the multitude with the fish and the loaves, the Bible says he went to the mountainside. Glory be to God. And he took time to pray to his father. Amen. So if Jesus, amen, the God king, the high priest, the son of God, the lily in the valley, Amen. The bright and morning star, the rose of Sharon. Amen. If he took time and he is our example, then what does that say for us? If the son of God took time to communicate with God and we are living epistles read of men, then we should be doing the same thing. God just want time. And God is not saying, I want all, I don't want all your 24 hours. If you want to give it to me, fine. Amen. 
you're going to miss out on your job, probably. <laughs> Amen. But even on the job, I have to find myself going to the bathroom just to pray, just to talk to God. Lord, it's a rough day. I'm going to need you on this. Amen. On the lunch break, get in the car just to talk to God. Lord, I'm halfway there. Just get me through. Amen. Hallelujah. Or just to say thank you when I arrive there, when I arrive to work, when I wake up in the morning. Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. The alarm clock went off. But if you didn't say, Terrell, get up. If you didn't say, Sister Winnie, get up. If he didn't say, Pastor, get up. If he didn't say, Elder, get up. If he didn't say, Deacon, get up. If he didn't say, First Lady, get up. Sister Angie, get up. None of us would have gotten up. So when we talk to God, let's just let him know. Give him that time. That's all he wants his time. Amen. That's all he wants his time. Amen. Um, that's it. That's about it. That was the end. Um, our conclusion talks about all of these things that we go through in our life. Amen. Um, and all of these, these issues that we go through. It talks about a young man that decided to take an all natural approach to manage his blood pressure. And he changed his diet and he started drinking plenty of water. Amen. Um, and he started doing these things. Amen. Cause the doctor wanted to put him on medication, but he talked to God. Amen. Sometimes you have to get your answers from God. And if you have that line of communication with him, if you converse with him and if you have that line open, amen, God will give you the answer that you need. And all you have to do is wait for it. Amen. Amen. I am done. That is all I have for tonight. Are there any questions or comments? We've got a couple minutes. Any questions or comments or thoughts? Oh, beautiful job. That's beautiful. Beautiful job. Amen. Well, if there is none, I will give it back into the hands of Sister Kid. Uh, and I want to say God bless you all. Thank you for the opportunity. Always grateful. And let's just take this lesson and really apply it. I know we go through these lessons um, and, and and we get things from it, but uh, let's apply these lessons. I, I feel like we all can grow, especially in these last and evil days. We need to have that line of communication open with God and make it a habit. Amen. We make we make all of these other things habits. And a lot of times we put the things that we need to make habits on the back burner. But prayer and communication, reading your word. Amen. These are things that we have to habitually teach ourselves to do. And if we love God like we say we do, it shouldn't come as hard as we think it should, we think it will be. Amen. And that's, those are the only words I'm going to leave with us tonight. I love you all and God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Um, before we um, I turn it over to the hands of the past, I just want to read the essential thought, and it states, is time with God on your daily to-do list, or is time with him an afterthought? <laughs> so that is exactly what Terrell was saying. We can take this lesson to heart and basically, basically just do it. Amen. So again, Elder Terrell or Elder Benson, oh, wonderful lesson. You brought it out. Wonderful. And we appreciate you taking the time out to be our teacher. Uh, we also appreciate our other teacher, uh, Sister Angela. We appreciate her too. So what I want to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is put you into the hands of the greatest pastor there is. No other person in the whole wide universe, and I'm saying it because, as they say, they got the mic. I got the mic right now. <laughs> Amen. But no, we do have a wonderful shepherd. So I'd like to, to um, reintroduce to you Elder Larry David Cotton, which is our pastor at Faith Temple, Church of God in Christ. And our ladies and gentlemen and visitors, can we please all say amen as he comes? Amen, amen. Pastor. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. <clears throat> thank you, amen. Sister President. We thank you for the kind words. Elder Batson, you knocked it out of the park. We thank God for you on tonight. Amen. We just praise God. I was looking at that introduction. And it was talking about some of the things that we do early in the morning. We get prepared for work and all this. But it didn't say we have a conversation with God. 
let's keep that conversation going. Mm -hmm. um, schedule that com conversation with the Lord at all times. Amen. Um, he's there for us, and he wants to hear from us. And so we thank God for all of you on tonight. What a marvelous, marvelous job you've done on tonight. I just want to thank everyone for being on the line with us. We're um, also happy that our church mother is back with us. Um, we thank God for her. I don't know if she was on. I don't think she was on Friday night, but she's here with us. Brother James, God bless him. We thank God for each and every one of you on tonight. We're just going to pray tonight and we're going to dismiss. We thank God for Ella Rushing, Sister Rushing. We miss them also on Sunday. Amen. And um, if you get a chance, go listen to the Little Flock um, Church of God in Christ, and you can hear our church mother when she spoke. She spoke so well, and we thank God for it. Father God in heaven, we thank you once again. Lord, we thank you for how you have just blessed us, how you smiled upon us, how you have taken care of us, oh God. We thank God that we can come to you at any time, oh God, and that you will hear our beck and cry. You hear the cries of your people everywhere. And Lord, we just want to say thank you tonight. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for healing. Thank you just for blessings, oh God. We thank you for what you're doing, even in Mother Kid's uh, body, oh God, that you're touching her, oh God. And we thank you for it. We thank you for how you're lifting up the heads of our bereaved uh, people, oh God. Continue to lift their heads up. Continue to let them know that you have never made a mistake. Oh, God, we thank you. Look on Tansy and that baby, that newborn today, oh, God. Lord, touch them, oh, God, and let it grow up, oh, God, in the way of you. Lord, and we thank you for it. We thank you for everyone on this line. Thank you for our first lady. Bless her. Bless everyone, our church mother and all of our elders and our deacons. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice tonight. In Jesus' name, thank God. And amen. I love you, and there ain't a thing in the world you can do about it. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Winnie. Amen, amen. Yeah. Love everyone. Everyone okay. have a good hey, night. Hey, Sister T. Love you. Bye, Rashid. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, Hi, Pastor. Love you. Hey, Sister T. All right. Love seeing everyone. Love seeing everyone.